Hey YouTube, this is Comic Hall. Uh, second video of the day. This time though, we are looking at Strange Blades 50 sub contest. Uh, this is the first time I ever done a contest ent entry on YouTube, uh, so hopefully it goes well for me. Um, so I understand Strange Blade. He's looking for um, some of the rarest books, minimum five, maximum fifteen in the first comic, um, first comic that uh, you ever had. I've got all of those ready to go. So we're going to start off, let's go with the uh, rarest books that I own first. I'm going to kick it off with a very nice copy, Captain America, number 100. I wish it was number one. Number 100. Um, as you can see, this is a very nice copy. The only noticeable flaw is that pen mark. Um, I included it with the rarest books that I had just Due to the shape of it itself, I mean, this book easily is an 8.0, even with the pen mark there. Um, without the pen mark, this could this could possibly fetch a nine. Super nice shape. This is uh, basically the story here: is Captain America was gone for quite a while, and then um, and then uh, he came back. He uh, it was it turns out he was frozen on ice. He came back with the Avengers in his first Silver Age appearance. And then uh, they gave him his series. They started it up where it left off, with being 100. So as you can see, it's the big premier issue. Essentially, this would be like, if they did it today, it would be Captain America, Volume 2, Number 1. Um, however, they didn't do it like that back then. So uh, they just started it where the original series in the 40s and 50s left off. So this is Captain America, Number 100. Um, awesome book. And you can see cool background. Black Panther, all the Avengers, um, Captain America 100, awesome book to have, uh, so hard to find a nice shape, um, and again, the only visible flaw is that pen mark, which I don't know what the person was thinking that did that, but whatever. So there it is, there's book number one of my rarities. Next one, we have Spawn number one. Now what you're thinking, Spawn number one isn't that rare, you can find it literally anywhere. However, this is Spawn number one, black and white. Um, had no idea how rare this was. Um, my dad, I mentioned numerous times before in my other videos, my dad ran a comic shop, and uh, when this came out, he just thought it was a cool looking book and bought it and stored it away. Eventually gave it to me. He and I then found out after doing some research, it's actually worth quite a bit. Um, very rare to find. Um, it's Spawn number one reprinted, but in all black and white. Um, cool cover, excellent shape. Um, not too many of these laying around. Um, you, you'll, you can find some on eBay, but but uh, for the most part, I mean, I've never ever seen one in the wild. Um, not since my dad brought it home from his shop, but I've never ever seen one, and uh, you know since they originally came out. There it is, spawn number one. I say, but a very fine, very fine plus. Um, nice, nice book, nice cover, and a cool one to have. One that uh, not many people, not many people have laying around. Up next, this is a variant. Usually, I'm not into variants, but I had to have this one. This is Amazing Spider-Man number seven hundred, Steve Ditko variant. There you have it right there. So essentially, the story with this is um, Steve Ditko, who did the first 38 issues of Amazing Spider-Man, as well as uh, the interior art of Amazing Fantasy 15. He was slated to do the cover of Amazing Fantasy 15, um, which very much resembles this one here. But um, Stan Lee and, and Marvel, they took a look at it. They didn't really care for Steve Ditko's cover, not as much as they did Jack Kirby's. So Amazing Fantasy 15, the cover is done by Jack Kirby, while the rest of the book and most of the Amazing Spider-Man uh, run, one through one through thirty-eight, is uh, Steve Ditko. I'm saying most, actually, all one through thirty-eight are done by Steve Ditko. Um, so there you. Hit, so this is the story here. Years later, when uh, Amazing Spider-Man seven hundred came out, known as the Death of Peter Parker, it um, it uh, they, they thought a good variant for this milestone issue would be to uh, bring out Steve Ditko's cover and re-release it. Um, not many of these are, are around. They're very hard to find. You even look on eBay for them, and a lot of the ones you find will be like um, Spanish variants and things like that. 
Um, another one I've never seen in the wild. Um, this was a gift again for my father, a gift to me um, for graduating um, a, a couple of years ago, um, got graduating from college. And um, this is what I got, and I was super happy with it. Very nice shape. Um, the only flaw is down in the left corner down there. There's a ding, which um, after doing some research is very common with these uh, 700 books just due to the size of them. Um, but there you have Amazing Fantasy cover, uh, unused by Steve Ditko, uh, re-released for Amazing Spider-Man 700. So up next for the rarities, we have another Amazing Spider-Man. This time it is number 129, first appearance of the Punisher. A um, little bit of a glare on the bag there, but... This is uh this is so hard to find lately. Um, ever since John Bernthal has done The Punisher on Netflix, it was hard to find before that, but even harder now. Um, not to mention finding one in in this nice shape. Uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful copy. It's hard to see with the glare, but virtually flawless with the exception of one little ding along the spine. I'm trying to focus. See right there, right by Spidey's foot. Aside from that, though, I mean the book is just fantastic shape. Um, virtually flawless with the exception of that one blemish. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 129, first puncher, super key book. Um, one that people are, are clamoring on right now. Very lucky to have uh, picked this up before they skyrocketed in price. Um, I would say just due to the shape of it and due to the high demand on it right now, this would easily be um, one of my rarest books that I have. I, I don't see too many... Uh, in general, but when I do, they, I, I haven't seen one in this shape unless it's, you know, graded on eBay or something. But, uh, fantastic shape. One of my favorite books. Up next, Amazing Spider-Man, or sorry, not Amazing Spider-Man. Getting, uh, getting caught up here. This is actually Incredible Hulk, number 181. We all know what this is. The first appearance of Wolverine. Um, when I finished my Amazing Spider-Man run, this was one of the books that I wanted to get. Um, once Spidey was done, I, I wanted to focus on other key issues, this being one of them, and, um, finally bought it. I, it's, it's a funny story, actually. They had it at a local comic shop, and, um, it's actually more of a coin in comic shop, and, um, he priced the book to sell. And I found out that day he had it, and I rushed to the shop to go pick it up, and he said he sold it about two hours ago. I couldn't believe it. Turns out a guy I graduated high school with bought it, and um, I just said to him one day, um, I know you just got it. I know you're a big Wolverine fan. You're a big Hulk fan. I don't want to pressure you. If you ever want to sell it, please consider me first. He's like, I'm not, I don't think I'll ever sell it, but I'll keep it in mind. I said, all right, fair enough. Uh, about six months later, I get a message, and it says, hey, man, I think I'm ready to sell that Hulk 181. It was something that I thought I really wanted, um, but there's something I want more, and it's just kind of sitting around as a display piece. I said, okay, what would you like to get for it? He said, 350 I said, done. And that's the story of how I finally got my Hulk 181. As you can see, it's in very nice shape. Uh, the only real flaw with it, and it's hard to tell in, in a video or pictures, but the bag it was previously in didn't it was it didn't fit that that well. I think it was um, it was just a little small. So the bag kind of tightened up, and it and it created this almost like this ripple right around here. Um, unnoticeable on camera and when you're displaying it you don't really notice it until you pick it up and kind of hold it but I mean it is a beautiful beautiful copy otherwise um, again another rare book so happy I have it um, and thanks to thanks to my buddy for letting me know keeping his word that if he ever sold it he'd let me know there it is Hulk 181 easily one of my top 10 favorite books that I own up next we have a slab book this is the new Teen Titans, number two, CGC 9.6. First appearance of Deathstroke. 
Very nice bug. I mean, not much to say about the condition. Just, wow. 9.6. First death stroke, also known then as the Terminator, Slade Wilson. Um, very, very cool book. Um, nice key issue. Nice first appearance to have. Um, they are, I, I classified this as one of my rarer books. Um, they are popping up a lot more lately with the announcement that he's going to be in the Batman movie. But, um... Still, it's not like one that you see all the time, and, and it's just a cool book to have. Um, I imagine they're going to be a lot harder to come by um, now on, once the movie passes and things like that. So I'm happy to have this one slabbed. Um, I actually got this for Christmas this past uh, this past Christmas. It was uh, woke up, went downstairs um, with the family, and this was sitting under the tree for me. Nice little surprise from Santa Claus. So I mentioned before, my dad ran a comic shop. He and I are into collecting together. Um, he actually bought this one for me as well um, a couple years ago. Um, he, he, you know, he bought it for for to for us to essentially say that we share it. Um, we, I always tell people, we share our collection. We each contribute to it, and um, it's it's essentially ours, even though they're in you know my possession. I consider it mine and my father's collection. And he bought this one for me. This will be the, my favorite book that I own. Easily. Always will be. Amazing Spider-Man number one. CGC 2.0. As you can see, it's a, it's a purple slab, which means there's some restoration. Just includes small amount of color touch. Um, there's a piece added. There's a tear seal. Um, it says Stanley or 78 written in pen on front cover, which essentially means he signed it. They just couldn't verify it. But I mean, you, we all know how CGC signatures work. They don't they don't really sign them, or they don't uh, verify them unless they're there. But there you have it, Amazing Spider-Man number one, um, easily the rarest, most favorite book that I own, right there. This is actually completed the collection. This is the last book I needed between 1 and 700, and I got it. Love it. You also wanted to see Strange Blade, my first comic I ever owned. And here it is. It's another amazing Spider-Man. Number 76. Lizard Lives. My dad, when I remember getting this when I was about 3 or 4 years old, I actually remember the moment I got it. My dad was trying to teach me how to count. I uh, count to 30, I think, and I was having a hard time, and he told me that if I could get to 30, he'd have a surprise for me. So after trying, 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 I finally was able to count to 30, and he pulled this out and gave it to me. And that night, he read it to me, and it's one of those ones where, like, it's nothing, it's not a key issue, it's nothing like that, it's just, this is the first book I ever owned. And um, I'll remember it forever because of it. It's just a cool story, a cool cool story on how I got it, and uh, it's one of those things I'll remember forever. But there you go. Thanks for doing this contest, Strange Blade. Hope I win.